Hey there, quirky folks! I'm your host, Anna, and today we're gonna take a deeper dive into one of the newer clans of Pandora. The first film had the Omatakaya clan playing a central role in the story. But there are 14 other clans in the Avatar franchise lore. Some of them including the Olanji clan and the Tuakami clan got cameos in the first movie. We might get glimpses of them in Avatar 2, but they'll mostly be explored in parts 3, 4, and 5. That's because Avatar 2 will introduce us to an Oceanic clan. This film is taking underwater filming to a whole new level. Forget what you saw in Aquaman or in Wakanda Forever, because James Cameron is going to show us who's the boss. But this underwater spectacle is coming because Avatar 2 is going to feature the Oceanic Metkayina clan. The last Avatar film only featured one particular clan, which was the Omatakaya clan. This clan included the Navi tribe of the forest. Jake Sully became the sixth Turok Makdu in history by bonding with their giant red Turok, and he led the clan from that point onwards. But now he will be exiled, so he'd move out with his family and end up with the Metkayina clan. But before we go deep underwater, it would be nice if you guys would hit the like and subscribe buttons and show us some support. Okay now, assuming that you're all good boys and good girls, you did exactly what I asked you to do. Let's get to business. The Metkayina is an oceanic Navi clan located on Pandora's reefs. They will be featured quite heavily in the way of water. When Jake and his family will be forced to leave their home, they'll go out and explore different regions of Pandora. Their search for a new home continues until they end up with the sea people of Metkayina. As you may have noticed by now, this clan has a close relationship with water, just like the Omatakaya did with the forest. It is led by Tono Wari, who is played by actor Cliff Curtis, and his wife is Ronald, who is played by Kate Winslet. Tono Wari and Ronald allow Jake and his family to stay with their people. They live on islands along the shores of the Pandoran Oceans, and they also live in areas that are near the mainland. Their villages are called Maruai, which are built into the roots of mangrove-like trees. And we've seen in the trailers that they have homes that hang directly above the water. That's because it allows them easy access for swimming. Just like the Omatakaya found the trees of souls to be sacred, the Metkayina people found the Cove of the Ancestors to be a sacred area for them. And they've got some really interesting flora and fauna found in their terrain. For instance, we'll be seeing creatures like the Dorado Verde, the Pincer Fish, and the Papa Mantis Tree. While clans like the Omatakaya ride dire horses, and they go through rituals to bond with Ikrins, the youngsters of the Metkayina people have to bond with a Surak, that's also called a Skimwing. Along with them, these people also bond with waterborne creatures called Elis. They use these creatures to glide across the Pandoran Oceans as the Elis are a good mode of natural underwater transport. But the biggest point of focus is their close relations with the whale-like sea creatures called the Tulkins. They are able to communicate with these sentient water creatures. In fact, the Metkayina consider them to be their siblings. Each member of this oceanic clan has a Tolkien spirit brother or a spirit sister, and they also have to pass various ritual tests with their Tolkien spirit brother or sister. Looking at these Navi people, you must have noticed the tattoos on their faces and bodies. James Cameron and co inspired these tattoos from the culture of the Moari people of Earth, but they've got their own symbolism on Pandora. Out of the 15 Navi clans on the planet, only the Metkayina people are known to practice the art of tattooing. All tattoos are created with inks that come from special animals, and they are unique to every individual as they tell about their histories and lives. Even the locations of these tattoos are unique for everyone. Tattoos over the heart and chest symbolize the safe embrace of the central island. A hunter of the deep sea has densely tattooed arms and less on their chest, and someone like Tonowari, who is the leader, has a lot of ink on his face. Everyone who receives a tattoo considers it as a gift from the clan and the goddess Ewa herself. Once a Metkayina has completed all of his or her rituals like bonding with a skimwing and passing the test with the Tolkien, they are bestowed with a special garment, their first tattoo, and three beads for their song cord. Because the Metkayina people have adapted to an aquatic lifestyle for years and years, their bodies have become different from all the other mainland Navi clans. In fact, their body parts have evolved over generations as they allow an easy underwater existence. The eyes of the Metkayina are quite enlarged and feature a blue color instead of yellow. Their forearms and lower legs have expanded to include a fin-like structure, and even their tails have brought in to form a paddle shape. The upper bodies of the Metkayina males seem stronger, and their chests are structured differently than the other males of the mainland. And overall, most of these oceanic people have curly hair. James Cameron mentioned that he made Avatar 2 so long because he wanted to introduce the new oceanic clan and its characters properly. So, it will be interesting to see what other things we will find out about these people in Avatar The Way of Water. Okay, that's all for now. Once again, smash those like and subscribe buttons if you enjoyed this video. Goodbye, and I'll see you in the next one.